Hi, it's Pat Kay from Cohesive Networks, and here's a quick overview of setting up BGP over VTI uh, to Amazon's VPN using dynamic routing. So to start, you need to have a VNS Cube controller available in the marketplace. There's a free edition where you can try this out. Um, and in this case, I've configured the VNS Cube controller, which means uh, setting up a few of the initial configuration options. And what I've done here is I've gone to the IPsec page in the user interface, and we have no defined IPsec elements yet. The thing to notice is that our ASN, it's a thing you kind of have to know about to do border gateway protocol or to do dynamic routing. Uh, it stands for autonomous system number, and this is just a, a private number that lots of people would reuse for private connections, 65,001. So the next step uh, that we're going to need is we'll need, in our Amazon console, we'll need to have created what they call a customer gateway object. So the customer gateway object is a virtual representation of the VNS Cube controller that, it's going to, that we're going to make a connection to. So I've already gone ahead and created that, and that what we'll notice is really just tells us a couple things. I told it that the ASN that I just showed you was 65001. And then its IP address was at 52.210, uh, uh, sorry, 52.5.210.248, which if we go back, we'll see that that's the case. So then what we want to do is go back there. So we have our customer gateway object. Um, the other thing you need is you need a VPC that you're going to connect to, and part of a VPC is its virtual private gateway. So we'll click here and we'll go, uh, we need to have made a virtual private gateway for our VPC. Let me go here. And so I've made one. I have a thing I call the light infrastructure uh, VPC. And so I've made that, uh, for that VPC, I've created this virtual private gateway object. When you create a virtual private gateway object, um, you basically give it a name and you can either get some default ASN from Amazon or you can give it whatever number you want. Um, the default it looks like from Amazon is 64512 because we see that's what was on the one that I pre-created. So that's, that can be an important part of the two sides talking to each other and exchanging dynamic routes. Um, as we set up a VPN connection, it'll be a route-based VPN um, and then that route-based VPN will exchange route information over it dynamically, so it's going encrypted over the VPN connection um, by sending what's called the border gateway uh, protocol over that connection. So we've got the things we need. We have a VNS Cube controller. We have a virtual private gateway for a VPC that I want to connect to. Um, and then we have the thing called a customer gateway object, which is the element on the Amazon side representing the controller. So the next steps are pretty easy. Um, some of it, uh, Amazon kind of predetermines for us. Uh, we don't define it, they just pick it, and then we have to get it from a configuration file. So what we're going to do is we then create a site-to-site -site VPN connection. So we click there. Um, I've got one in place and one that I deleted. So I say create VPN connection. So. VNS3 BGB, pick my private gateway. Remember, it's the light infrastructure VPC that I said. And then, is there an existing customer gateway? So I have the one that I pre-made, or you, they let you make one sort of in path here as you go along. Let me go get my BGP demo. And then you can do two types of this, because here we're setting up the VPN. You can do two types of VPN. Um, one is just a route-based VPN where you can use static routes. Um, the other thing you can do, and that's what we want to show here, is connect with dynamic routes using BGP. So we're going to say dynamic. Um, we could predefine, actually, the, the, the VTI connection. They'll share a small subnet reference that's unrelated to your networks as a means for them uh, sharing their information. You'll see that in a moment. I'm going to go ahead and let Amazon pick those uh, subnets for me. They're four address networks uh, slash 30s. 
and I'll let them pick so I don't have to think about which, which are valid and which are not valid. Um, I am going to put in a very secure uh, PSK here, test test. So pre-share key for the uh, VPN connections. Um, I don't want to use default options. I want One of the things we believe at Cohesive is if you're setting up site-to-site -site VPN, be absolutely as explicit as possible on both sides. Um, don't attempt to negotiate uh, defaults. Uh, those behaviors change through time, and, and you may end up with configuration settings you don't like, or you may end up with a broken connection. So there are a lot of tick boxes here. Basically, we're going to turn off AES-128. We're going to turn off SHA-1. And then we're going to use a cheap and cheerful, what's called diffie hellman Key Exchange Group. We're going to use 14. Um, and then we're going to get rid of the rest. One moment. I'm going to use Ike v1. Um, Ike v2 is getting ever closer to good industry inter uh, sort of compatibility between devices. Uh, for now, we prefer Ike v1 uh, for probably about the next year. Uh, so we'll end up with AES-256, SHA-2-256, DH-14 for phase one, uh, phase two, and what's called the PFS group. So I'm going to repeat the same process here below for what will be the second connection. And I'm going to go ahead and, because this isn't for production and it is just for a video, I'm going to uh, leave these uh, the same. And I'm going to just leave those as defaults. So the key thing here being just the cryptographic algorithm choices. So that's it. You make those choices. And so to recap, we had to point to the virtual private gateway. That's basically the VPC, the object in the VPC that's going to receive this information. The customer gateway, uh, which is the object that represents the VNS cube control you're connecting to. Pick dynamic. Uh, for test purposes here, a simple pre-shared key and then very explicit set of configuration options for the tunnel, VPN tunnel to connect on. So we say create VPN connection and there you go. So what we're going to do is we're going to connect the VPN. Um, we're going to have to get some information from Amazon about those uh, the, the interfaces that these two need to talk to each other on. So if we go to pending, can we download the generic configuration yet? Let's see. So it hasn't defined some of it yet. So let's just give it a moment. Um, and I promise I'll, I'll cut this part out of the video. Be right back. Just checking back in again. We're still in pending mode. It's been a few minutes. That's one thing nice with VNS Cubed. Um, when you have a VNS cube controller, you can terminate, you know, fives of, tens of, many dozens of, 100 plus VPN connections to a single controller. Um, and when you create a connection, that's, you know, the seconds it takes to click create and it's ready to go and ready to connect. Um, here, uh, there's a secret instance or set of instances launching behind the scenes, so we're waiting for the AMI launch time, which obviously when you're setting up the VNS cube itself, you wait for that. Um, but every, every VPN is terminated by, by secret hidden instances, um, and we have to wait for those on the, on the Amazon side. So something to think about when you're doing connectivity or federation at scale. We'll come back when, that, when they're back. Okay, we've reached the point where it still says pending, but where we can download the generic configuration to uh, uh, have the information in the easiest form to consume of what we need to set up in our in our uh, VNS Cube VPNs. So we're going to go to generic. It's the most straightforward uh, thing to go get this information. So we click on generic, download. I'll open that up, text editor. And so let's get the information we need. So you'll note that the, this doesn't show the uh, configuration elements that we picked. Um, I think that's just a little gap in the, the generator because uh, once we have it set up, it'll use the, the things we said. Um, so we're basically going to go down to what they call the outside IPs, which is 
the Amazon internet public IP for the VPN and the VNS cubed IP. Um, if we remember the VNS cubed IP was this. Um, so the first tunnel, uh, tunnel one, and let's confirm on the screen there. Tunnel one is this address. So, and that's the one that matches what we just saw there, right? So tunnel one. And then we're going to come back and get uh, the addresses that we, we are going to need for our virtual interface. They call those the inside IPs. We'll come back for those. So go to the VNS cubed, find a remote endpoint. So. Tunnel one. We're going to go over net traversal. We're using Ike v1. We have a simple pre shared key. And then what I do here is I click if this was a plain policy based VPN, we're almost done, other than if we want to specify those parameters that we had. Um, so we're going to say enable route based VPN. And then this is what we want, which is via VTI. So uh, most route-based VPNs, you're basically connecting and saying the everything of any possible set of addresses connecting to any possible set of addresses. Um, and then what you do is you have to define the VTI interface. That's what Amazon calls the uh, inside addresses. So let's go get those. So our inside address is 30. Amazon's is 29. They're in a slash 30. So the slash 30 would be slash dot 28, dot 29, dot 30, and dot 31. So the bottom and top used by the network, and then these addresses used by us so that we have referenceable addresses across the VPN on the same network. So we can pass traffic between these two uh, elements initially. So we go put that in. 30 slash 30 and then the configuration elements remember that we said we wanted to have here so it was phase one equals AS 256 SHA 2 underscore 256 DH 14 phase 2 equals AS 256 dash whoops we have a typo here dash SHA-256, and then the PFS group we also chose as DH14. Then the other thing we do is we say our local peer ID um, is the public IP. It's expecting us to say this is who we are from a simple identity point of view. It expects us to say our public IP as opposed to perhaps our private network IP. So we just make that explicit with local peer ID equals. So we say create. And so we end up with an IPsec via VTI tunnel. There's our interface address uh, there on the slash 29, the dot 29. And then we can give it a look and see what's going on. Let's show the log. Still taking a second. Let's go back and see if it says pending still. Okay, it says available. So let's see, AS256, SHA-2256, DH14. So what I put in seems to be right. Um, the total CIDR is a 28 slash 30, right? Amazon's using the 29, we're using the 30. So let's go back to our controller. So, okay, there we go. So we see that it connected. So let me come here and hit refresh. Okay, so we have a VPN connection 
and the only thing right now that can go over the VPN is traffic on the private interfaces. So uh, the VTI that we, we put in place. So via R.30 and their dot 29. So the next thing that we do, oh, so let me show you something here. If you go to this console, let's hit refresh. This is an interesting part of setting up a, a BGP. Um, so it still thinks the, the, so right now we think we have a connection. Um, Amazon says we're still down. Uh, it just takes it a second to propagate the information that it's up so that it displays in their portal. So don't panic. It just, it takes a little bit. If it takes much longer than this, then we'll, uh, we'll, <laughs> we'll pause again and, and come back to it. Cause I want to show you that a distinction between the VPN, uh, being up and, uh, IPsec part of the VPN being up and then the full BGP configuration set up uh, because we said we wanted to use dynamic routing. So we'll pause here again. Okay, we're back. So we got to the state I was looking for. It took a few more minutes um, where the portal shows you that IPsec is up, status is down. So if we'd done this with static routes, it would just check if the VPN's up and it would say IPsec is up up um, but what it wants to what they're indicating here keeping the interface common is that okay your, your VPN connection is up but you said you wanted to use dynamic routing so there's the static routes won't work on the Amazon side and to some degree since those won't be there it won't matter if you you put set some static routes on the Venus cube side we need to have dynamic routing working so to set up the dynamic routing we're going to uh, use the Amazon address, remember that we, uh, for the quote unquote inside CIDR, um, which we got from our generic setup. So there's the gateway, so that we can get. And then remember we need the ASN um, from this, which we find on the virtual private gateway. So we go to the virtual private gateway for this, find light infra VPC, and it's 64512. So we then go to the Venus cubed, and so we've got a VPN tunnel, which is zero to zero, anything to anything. Um, and basically, we've it's going through a VTI interface that's been created, or the VTI interfaces are, are an integral part of this route based VPN. We go here and we click new BGP peer. Um, we say eBGP, which stands for external border gateway protocol. So I need the peer's address. I need the ASN. I'll put that in. Um, you can define, it's not so much a password as really, again, another pre-shared key. Um, I don't think AWS lets us do the PSK on their side, but if you're talking um, to a customer over, you know, a VPN over a direct connector, a VPN over the internet, we can have an additional level of BGP security, which we obviously would recommend that you use a nice sized passphrase there. So we need that peer address. So let's go get from the generic document. So the address of the gateway is 29. So we're basically saying, go across the VPN to this dot 29 address using the BGP protocol. And uh, you want to go talk to a thing that has a number of 64512 and if they supported it, you would want to, to have a shared passphrase. Um, at the moment, what we're going to do is we're not going to allow any routes to come in or out, um, but we'll, we'll be able to see what, uh, uh, where we're at uh, before we do that. So this is tunnel one. Um, so there's a concept of, of effectively we're going to have two active connections, but only one of them can be routing at a time. So usually tunnel two is the secondary as far as Amazon's concerned. We have seen it sometimes not be that. Um, when we get to setting up the secondary, uh, then what we're going to do is basically tell our side that the secondary is farther away from a network point of view. Uh, and we'll show that when we, when we go through that. So I now still have my connected status here. And I just said, go connect 
to dot 29 address I'm on the dot 30 over the VPN and make a BGP connection for me so let's click through so we haven't connected yet so we have a BGB state equals idle um, let's see that should should connect up here unless we did something wrong so there you go boom established for 15 seconds so it had just connected before we hit the display so now we start to we have some metrics here uh, this is what's called a gray box display in Venus cubed a lot of the screen we're showing you our interpretation of what's going on Venus cubed is this orchestration device for just all sorts of network uh, use cases using all sorts of network libraries where you don't have to know everything about it when you see something in a gray box on Venus cube we're showing you information from the underlying operating system from the underlying uh, BGP system so we're saying you don't need magic glasses this isn't being sort of mid changed in any way by our opinion this is the data from the system um, so in this case with something as complex as BGP can be we want to make sure we're showing you effectively the information we have so what we see is I received a route 172.31.0022 which is the uh, route of that VPC super duper and the way to get to it is through this ASN all right so we received that so then we see received routes after ACLs ah okay I have to let that thing in and then I'm not advertising any routes um, so uh, let's take a look so one of the things with VNS cubed is VNS cubed gives you a layer 3 encrypted network for machine to machine interaction where you can basically create an over-the-top layer 3 uh, to through and across the clouds and in this case we defined it as this cider here so what I'm going to do is I'm not going to advertise the Amazon underlay that I'm in I'm not going to advertise the Amazon VPC range I'm advertising the over-the-top encrypted network uh, that VNS cubed is providing via this controller so click on IPsec edit my BGP peer well no let me go back to take a pause what I meant to say was I'm going to advertise that route. This is super easy. Um, if you've ever dealt with an ASR, ISR, other things, I need to tell people, devices, things that I have. I'm I have the route to this. So route to encrypted relay and. The defaults route advertisement there's an interface route if you're doing static routes to the route based vpn you choose uh, route based vpn tunnel or interface route is to standard things like eth0 or if you've added more uh, devices eth123 etc but i'm just going to say yep i know about this so i say advertise route and then uh there we go add route so there we go we see it's there and it's an advertisement it's not to any specific interface or gateway it's just literally effect it's a bgp announcement that i know about these things um, so now let's keep that what we want to do is we want to be able to send we want to be able to send that out as well so let's go here click through to our bgp peer we're still established yay um, and what we're going to do is we're going to edit so enter enter an access list one rule per line each line must be in or out permit or deny in cider format so I'm going to say out permit the advertisement for my overlay so by default VNS cube does not receive or send any routes that's the absolute safest way to do it and then via our API or via this UI you can then go ahead and uh, uh, turn those on effectively by using the access control lists here so we'll hit save and click through again and it hasn't shown up yet while well, it's here let's get that inbound route and what we're going to do is we're going to go back and edit and say that that's allowed in as well so we're going to say in permit the thing that's being advertised from the Amazon VPC save and let's see what we've got so advertised routes so here we go we see me advertising that 
um, and I'm sending it over my dot 30, uh, which is that connection I have to hit the other, other side on BGP. And let's hit refresh here. And there we have received route 172.31022, received route after ACL. So now um, my VNS cubed, and if you're running the encrypted overlay or you're propagating uh, routes, we can see uh, this route and other controllers. If this was a multi uh, VNS cube topology, they would now know about this route. And we see that we're advertising the route to the encrypted overlay. So if we go to our status page on the VNS cubed, what we see is I know about 172.31.0.22. It came over BGP. And in a VNS cube topology, there's controller 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, you know, up to 32, up to 64. Um, we tell you where that came from. In this case, we say it came from controller 0. Um, we could probably provide some better information there. So go back to IPsec. So I'm up, I'm running, I've got my tunnel, my VPN. We see bytes in, bytes out. We see some data as we're advertising routes is going through the VPN. There you go, we saw it change again. And then we have our BGP peer information and we can see that we've received the route and we can see that we've uh, broadcast the route. So we need another one of these things. So this time it should be faster and I, I won't uh, belabor so many points as we go through it. So here we go, we go to our next tunnel. Right, and again, remember, there might just be a little gap here because that's not what we said we wanted to negotiate and you saw on the display there that we negotiated the things we expected. So again, our gateway is at 248. We're, we're connecting both of these two to our single controller. Um, you can have two controllers, one talking to each of these and having those peered. Uh, there's ways of having that availability of the instance, although instance availability in Amazon is spectacular, so it may not oops, may not be worth the, the effort. So I'm going to go uh, create that. So to find the remote endpoint. AWS underscore tunnel score two IP address at T IP one. We're using the same pre shared key. Did I type it right? I did. We're going to do route based VPN, VTI. When you do those, they almost every device just does zero to zero. We allow you to narrow that if you want to in conjunction with the other side, but some devices don't let you control that. So then we need our quote unquote inside um, elements. Let's go get those. So we are the virtual private gateway is the 37 or the 38. Oops, we're going to say what we are, the 38. And so they're using the 37. Amazon gives itself sort of the, the low in the, in the little slash 30 cider there. And what we're going to do real quickly is we're just going to pop up another one of these and just copy in our uh, elements from we're going to go grab those and we're just going to remember to change the local peer ID. Oh no, this is the same local peer ID, so perfect. So we got the information we need. We'll do a bit of it here because we want to connect the same tunnel with the same uh, bits of information. So we say create. So this time <clears throat> we won't wait for the Amazon portal to uh, reflect that the, that the status is up because the portal reflects the reality a uh, bit later from, from when it's all actually happened. So we'll just keep moving ahead. So we're still waiting to get a response there. Um, we don't want to set up the BGP until we have the connection here. So we'll keep an eye on this. There we go. Boom. 
All right, we're up there. So now we go look here. So again, they're at 37. Let's just confirm so we don't have a typo, right? So we're now going to make a BGP connection to that address there. So we say new BGP peer. Peer's address is that. Um, I instantly forgot the that simple ASN. So let's go back here, get it. And there's not a passphrase. And again, we'll just go ahead and we'll just let's just hit create here. And see what we've got. Let me go get the ACLs, remember from here, just so I don't have to type them in. Because what I want to do here, strange as it may seem, this is for redundant, this is the gold standard for redundant communications. In case one of the communication channels fails, you fail over to the secondary. So I want to receive the same routes and broadcast the same routes, which then how how does it know? How does it know to not get confused by that? So let's see if our PGP session established. There we go. So we received a route, but before ACLs. So there's we're not currently broadcasting that we know about this guy. Um, if we did, that might cause some confusion. Um, so what we want to do is say, OK, here's my access control list. And I want to send this out. I want to uh, let this in. And what we're going to do is add network distance. And we're going to say, you know what? I am two hops away over the network. The other one, by default, will be seen as uh, one hop away. So that means I'm farther away. Um, we're telling Amazon that, that we're telling ourselves that Amazon believes Tunnel 2 is farther away. So we hit save. And literally, all it does is it keeps a list of hops and it repeats ourselves as a hop. Um, it's just the way, uh, a simple way to set priorities was just tell tell the devices how many hops they are away from each other on the network, regardless of if they really are that far away from each other. Because I could have said 22 hops there. So if we look, received routes, and then after ACLs and route maps are applied. So see, I think that that 172.31 0022 is three hops away here on tunnel two. Um, and I'm anticipating as I advertise that Amazon's doing something similar on their the route two, on their tunnel two. You can't set inward distance and outward distance at the same time. Whereas if I go look at that route here, I think that 172.31.0022 is one hop away. So that's how the prioritization happens. So let's go see if the Amazon portal believes, like our side believes, that everything is up and groovy. Um, and now we uh, can start transferring information um, and getting it properly routed because each side is telling the other side about the routes available. So I go to my VPN connection, my light VNS3 BGP. Look at tunnel details. Okay, so we see for the first one it's come up and it says it's received one BGP route. So it thinks itself is up when it's exchanged routes. Um, the other side is up. Um, if we were pinging across, it would probably, well, first of all, since it's tunnel two, it wouldn't matter because everything would be going over tunnel one. Um, but this will be up shortly and you'll have your uh, dynamic BGP routing between VNS cubed and an Amazon VPC. Thanks.